It's awesome. You guys made the Inc. 5000, uh, I think four or five times. And, uh, you know, we, we've made it to the last three years. And I think what it translates to me is a lot of chaos and, and a lot of uh, moving and moving fast. And, and I think pivoting, you know, we, we've gotten to the point where when we hire people, like if you don't like change, uh, like this is not the place for you type stuff, because uh, things change when you find out something doesn't work or you grow too fast and something breaks. Like what are some of the challenges you guys faced uh, in growing your business that, uh, that if that you, if you could do something different five years ago, you would do different. Uh, hiring is always tough. And, you know, the people within your organization are the most important part of the company, but it also is where you have to dedicate the, the most energy. So I think if there was, you know, one area, again, I still wouldn't change anything as painful as it was. Like there was just so much learning that came out of, of struggle Um, But, you know, going into 2018, I talked about those 10 lease ups at the end of 17, we actually made zero dollars. Like we didn't make any money in 2017 (laughs) and we had all of this business coming in 2018. I was like, what are we doing? How are we going to do this? And we were about, I think we're about like 18 people at that time. You know, from my projections, we needed to get to probably somewhere around like 50 to be able to support the amount of business that I had already won. And we had to grow really fast. I'll never forget. I mean, my wife and I were laying in bed one night and we had hired all these people. And she's just like, where are these people going to work? I was like, oh shit, we got to get a new, we got to get a new office. And we, and we got a new office like the next day. So like that, those sorts of things happen really fast as you're, as you're trying to grow. Um, it was at the end of 17 though, where we started implementing EOS, the entrepreneurial operating system that Mark alluded to. And, and what that is, is it just gives you, it gives a way for the team to all row in the same direction. You know, the, the concept is born out of Jim Collins, good to great. And it's about right people and right seats. And there's a lot of other nuance and a lot of other things that come with that. But when you look at EOS, there's nothing more important than that right people, right seats concept. And first you have to identify the seats and you have to figure out, you know, what do I need in this organization to be able to support and deliver on what what we've said we're going to do? And then who are those people? And you set core values and you set a, a passion and come up with a target market and all these things in creating a vision for what you want the company to be. Um, so we did that in early 2018 and we started building a leadership team and we you know, started executing on those lease ups. And as I mentioned, we never faltered. We were always able to get it done. Um, but by the spring of 19, about a year later, we had a few you know, leadership team members. We had grown to that 50 number. And I'll never forget, my wife and I went on vacation and we went away and we just felt like we had this thing. Like it was, it was locked up. Like we were great. We had all the right people. And, and we just, we, we, were, we were in bliss for that couple week period. And then for the rest of 2019, I'm going to share with you guys what we went through. (laughs) We went through a complete culture shift because everybody who was there before, a lot of people, I shouldn't say everybody, a lot of people who were there before did not like what was happening, right? There was change. It was hard. They weren't the most important person anymore in the company. And, And then we had a lot of people who we had brought in who just, you know, we had to get in really quick and they weren't necessarily the right fit. Um, so in 2019, we went through, we had to turn over 30 different people where either we had to let them go or they quit. In a 50-person re- company? In a 50-person company. Jesus. We had to replace them. And we had to deal with seven different interactions where we had to engage legal counsel to deal with it. So if that doesn't break you... <laughs> Like, I mean, that is, that is, that is the most painful experience we've ever gone through. First of all, because we care so much, we care about people, you know, you know, some of our core values are kindness and team player and dynamic life experience that, and that's all about our people and what they do outside of work in in some ways and to not be able to provide the kind of community and resource and and company that people felt empowered and was where they wanted to be and that were the right people, right seats. That was, that was really hard. I mean, that was really hard for us as, as, as leaders. 
Um, but it made us so much stronger. And by the time the pandemic hit, we had gone through that experience. We had felt that pain. And the next year in 2020, we, we only had three people who, who left, right? And that's just kind of normal turnover. And during the pandemic, that, that, that was much higher for most companies. Um, that continued in 21, where it was all about focusing on the clients that we had and the people that we have. And we've done a number of things over the last, I would say, year, but certainly in the last six months to really focus in and, and do that because there's growth coming and, and we're in a place where we can continue to grow, but we're going to do it in a really measured and, and smart way as opposed to the way we did it last time. And I'll end with kind of the, fir- the, the thing that's probably most resonant in what we've done just in the last couple of months. So number one, heading into 2021, we changed our BHAG. So a BHAG is a big, hairy, audacious goal. What, what you want to do with your company and how you want to grow. Um, so we had a BHAG of having 50% market share and $50 million in a calendar year. I was like, man, that sounds really hard. <laughs> I, don't know if I, wanna, I don't know if I wanna do that anymore after going through what we went through in 2019, the tumult that would come with that would just be too much. So we changed that and we really focused in on our people. And our people, what that meant was we had organically been celebrating when a broker in our company can do a hundred transactions in a year, we call it our hundred deal club. So when somebody celebrates a hundred deal club, it's a big celebration. We, we do, we give them, um, you know, they, they join the club and we honor that and, and do that at the end of the year. So what we wanted to do was have a hundred brokers join the hundred deal club over time. And that felt much more manageable. We also had a, um, a, a part of our BHAG where we wanted people to be here five years because celebrating a five-year anniversary has become a big deal at LLCR also, where we will give them a hard hat and everybody signs it and we do a, we do a party and, and all that. So we want to have 50 people celebrate their five-year anniversary at LLCR. That's a very different people-focused BHAG versus what we were trying to do from a revenue standpoint. And the last thing I'll say is that Amy, my co-founder, my wife, actually just recently stepped down as our managing partner, and she's taken on a role as our chief culture officer. So she's going to be doing that. She's also been trained as a professional coach, um, and we've brought in a head of agent development as well to really be able to grow our brokerage. So completely different philosophy and how we want to grow now than what we did you know, late 17, 18, 19, that pain that we felt. 